Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you are brand new here, welcome! I'm Bonnie, Old Sold Mermaid, and today I have an unboxing. It's a mass market deck that has been out for a while. It's by Lo Scarabeo, and it is the pre-Raphaelite Tarot. I have been seeing this, um, the, the cards, the images, on many people's Instagram uh, accounts, and I have finally bit. I, right now, I'm going through a phase of researching the models of the Pre-Raphaelite artists, and uh, I said, I gotta get this deck. And there are some other decks that aren't as common some indie decks in the pipeline that are coming to me. It's just taking a while. Right now I'm obsessed with the Pre-Raphaelites. I've always been a big fan um, of their of the paintings, particularly those of uh, Malay, Rossetti, and uh, later um, John Waterhouse. But um, so I, I just realized I needed to get I needed to get this deck. Now, just really, really briefly, if you don't know, if you're if you're new to tarot, and I'm by no means, no means an art expert or art historian or anything, but the Pre-Raphaelites or the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, um, they were a group of English painters and poets and art critics uh, founded in the mid 18. It was about 1848 by William Holman Hunt, John, John Everett Millay, um, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, um, and uh, some others. And then later on, who joined the group, Ford Maddox Brown, Arthur Hughes, um, Edward Byrne Jones, and William Morris, and John William Waterhouse. And it was basically, they were a bunch of artists who were rebelling about the status quo of the day and um, particularly the influence of uh, an artist, Sir Joshua Reynolds. He was the founder of the English Royal Academy of, of Arts and they were pretty much rebelling, you know, over the, how commonplace and conventional the art had gotten. So they were doing their own thing. So right, I'm reading a book on the models that they had used and I um, particularly interested in one, well, they were all fascinating, but one, Elizabeth Siddle, who later became the wife of, uh, of Dante Gabriel Rossetti. So we're going to open this tuck box up and, um, see it's still in the plastic and I'll be right back. All right. I have freed the deck and you know, it's Los Scarabeo, so it just comes in this tuck box. It's not a particularly sturdy tuck box as maybe some of the US games um, tuck boxes are, but you know, it's suitable. Uh, oh, this is one of my very favorite paintings. And I hope this is a card in the deck. We shall see, but it just comes, you know, with a little white book where only part of it's in English. So here we go. Let's see, am I close enough? You can see the images. I'm really excited, you guys. So you know Los Carabeo decks are a little bit thinner than um, some other mass market decks. Now I have a US Games deck, the uh, mass market version of the Field Tarot here. And you can see, the difference in size. They are a lot thinner and uh, this, in this case, it's a little bit shorter. But look at these backs. I'm not sure, can't remember, but I've seen this pattern before. I think it's wallpaper made by William Morris. If you're an art historian, let me know. And I, please correct me when I'm wrong and spouting nonsense because I am telling you now, I am not a expert or proficient. I am just a fan and a lover. <laughs> um, cardstock is very, I don't have a lot of Los Carabeo decks. I have a couple and this is more, it's not as nice as US 
U.S. Games cardstock. It's it's matte, but it's more papery, but it's it's not bad, but it's not the best. All right, let's flip it over. Ooh, can't remember who did the painting. I think this might be Malay. And tell me who is poisoning the water here. Somebody is poisoning the water and I can't remember who it is. Oh, uh, so that's going to be the the um, theme of, of this walkthrough. I can't remember. I know the painting, but I can't remember. So these figures aren't going to be exact replicas. It, they're going to be, it's a, another artist, Juliano Costa, or Costa, who has done his own depictions of the, um, of the classic art. All right. So this was the fool. And let's see how closely it follows the RWS. This would be the magician. And so it doesn't have, you can see it doesn't have any titles. I believe this artist also did the, what is it, the mystic tarot, which also has similar images. So this is the high priestess. And the Empress. So yeah. Well, it's an RWS stack. The Emperor. But look at these vivid, vivid colors. The Hierophant. The Lovers. Chariot, Strength, the Hermit, and so far, right off the bat, um, look at the uh, the Wheel of Fortune card. Um, this is pretty much an RWS clone with its own flavor to it. Justice, the Hanged Man. I could, if if you are attracted to this art, if you're a beginner, you could learn with this deck. So far, so good. Um, so far, looking at the majors. Okay, if you are not familiar with the story, this is the model for this portrait. It's Ophelia, and this is Ophelia. Um, just about to drown after Hamlet rejects her and kills her father Polonius. So when you see the full artwork, you know it's very vivid and it sticks to the, the description that um, Hamlet's mother gives Gertrude in the Shakespeare's play Hamlet. But the model was Elizabeth Siddell. She was very young, 19, 20 years old when she sat for this portrait by uh, John Everett Millay and it's the only portrait she ever sat uh, for for this artist and I will tell you why. Well he did all the greenery, all the nature ahead of time and then when it came for her he put her in a tub of water. He was very proud of this uh, old antique wedding dress that he got and put her in and he had her sit there in a tub of water for hours and hours. Now, at first, he put candles underneath the tub to keep it warm. But after a while, you know, an artist, they forget about everything but their work. The candles went out, the water turned cold, and she was numb. And she didn't want to say anything because, you know, she needed the work. And uh, she ended up getting really sick. And I believe she got pneumonia. And her father got really, really upset with the artist. And eventually Malay ended up paying for, I believe the doctor bills. But because of this episode, it, um, it, it is rumored that this is when she became, because of this illness, she became dependent on the drug laudanum. You know, a lot of ladies, a lot of people got um, addicted to laudanum. Um, I think it's, you know, a derivative. It has opium and I don't know. 
but um, it was, you know, addictive stuff. Um, from then on, she was afflicted with ill health, which she wasn't before, and um, it, it, it was a uh, contributor to her downfall, and she died, I think, at 32 years old. But she eventually married Rossetti, and uh, they did have a child, and uh, which was stillborn, and she died at the age of 32. And yeah, it's I'm yeah very fascinating. The stories of all the models. So temperance. I'm sorry. I just I I find the stories of the people very very. Um, fascinating especially the models the women the devil the tower the star the moon very bright moon So there is a little naked baby. Judgment. The world. The Ace of Cups. I just love these bags. And so I wonder, you know, I'm wondering if these are... I can't tell for... If, from the original painting, which is Elizabeth Siddell. Uh, Jane Morris was another one that was used a lot. Uh, Fanny Cornforth. Um, there were several that were used. Sisters were used. I know Rossetti used his sister. The Three of Cups here. Uh, this is from a uh, painting, Gather Ye Flowers While Ye May. This is a water house painting, I think. This is also water house for the Five of Cups. And this is the Beloved. This, this is um, titled The Beloved. This painting. Um, this isn't exactly the painting. It's the uh, Juliano Costa's interpretation of the original. This is Pandora. Is this by Malay or Waterhouse? And I can't remember who did the, the artist and who did what painting is running all in my head. It's Malay or Waterhouse. Pandora. And this is so perfect for the Seven of Cups, isn't it? The Eight of Cups. Is that Rossetti? Is that a depiction of Rossetti? It looks like it's Rossetti. The artist. Oh, and, and their signature stamp that was hidden in their paintings at the beginning, the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. I think that's Rossetti. The Ten of Cups. This would be the page. Got a little horse for the night. A crown for the queen. So the king and queens have different crowns. I like how they do match. I always like when the kings and queens and decks kind of have a similar theme. So this is the Ace of Pentacles. The Two of Pentacles. Yes, if you are a beginner, if you are an art lover, you could totally learn with this deck side by side with an RWS. And once you get a good handle of the RWS, you can you can try learning at the same time, you know, side by side. Or once you're, you know, you've got a pretty good footing with a traditional maybe Pamela, uh, Pamela Coleman Smith art deck, you could totally run with this. The Six of Pentacles. The Seven. 
the eight of pentacles i love these vibrant 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 hues the nine and the ten these are so rich and it just you know when the backs and the colors in the backs and the colors in the um of the imagery in the front match it's always a nice thing so there's the page of pentacles the knight the queen of pentacles in her garden the king look how rich Here is the Ace of Wands. Again, could it be Elizabeth Siddle or Lizzie Siddle, Jane Morris? Um, oh, this was the art critic and, and uh, artist uh, Rushkin. Now, it, it's interesting to, uh, to note that um john rush ruskin that's it ruskin uh malay painted this portrait of him and it took a while and while they were doing it uh ruskin's wife and the artist malay fell in love now ruskin was impotent he and his wife had been married for a number of years and she was able to get an annulment because they had never consummated their marriage even after years of being married. So the artist of this portrait of this very influential art critic who was so key as to putting the, the brotherhood on the map. Um, yeah, <laughs> there was that scandal. Um, his wife ended up uh, running off with the with the artist who painted his portrait. Uh, the Three of Wands. Oh, this is from the painting depicting what is her name? Is it Miranda from the Tempest? Uh, I think that's her name from the Shakespeare's The Tempest. The Four of Wands, very traditional. The Five of Wands. Unless you got very much the kind of the Capulets and the Montagues fighting. You look at those with the stripy pants. It reminds me of the 1968 Franco Zeffirelli uh, Romeo and Juliet. We've got a Lady Godiva here for the Six of Wands. The Seven of Wands. I'm just fangirling over the um, rich colors, you guys. The Eight. Ooh. And the Nine of Wands. Look at this. The Ten of Wands. Page. You got a, a youth in Tudor fashion. Now, when you look at the real paintings, the, the thing that stands out with these artists is how the in, intricacies of nature that they bring it to life in their paintings and faces and women. Oh my gosh, they painted the most beautiful images of women. The Queen of Wands. And I like how they match the king, the ace of swords, and the two of swords. Oh, the rich greens and blues and golds. The three of swords. I believe this is a Painting by Mo no Rosetti. 
Oh, was it Malay? Oh my gosh, they're all, all running into me, all running into my head at the same time. Four of Swords. Five of Swords. Okay. So this is the Lady of Shalott by Waterhouse. John uh, William Waterhouse. These figures were added for the card just to get a more traditional depiction. Seven of Swords. I like how they have the female here. The Eight of Swords. Very traditional. The Nine. The Ten of Swords. The Page. Hmm, he's in armor. Oh, and what do we have as the knight? So they've taken bits and pieces of the famous paintings. I've, uh, I can't remember the name of the painting with, where this is from, but it's the knight of swords for the deck's purposes. This is the queen. So, just, um, yes, all you get, very basic information, if you know Los Carabello decks, um, okay, so there is, they go into a little bit about the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. The art and life of the Pre-Raphaelite painters were wholly devoted to the pursuit of beauty in the sense of the divine essence intrinsic in every aspect of creation. With their ability to transport us to distant worlds and through the symbolic language, these incredible artists still manage, even today, to fascinate us, arouse profound emotions within us, and put us in touch with our intuitive side. Um, they go into the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, but what I want to read is a little bit about the Muses, because that's what is um, grabbing my attention right now. We cannot fully understand the concept of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood without rightly including its sisterhood. In fact, there were many women, mothers, sisters, friends, domestic staff, wives, and lovers who revolved around the young artists and built up all-consuming relationships with them. They were the muses and icons of timeless beauty that inspired the magnificent works of their brothers, and we can see them depicted in this deck of cards. The most famous was undoubtedly Elizabeth Siddell, known as Lizzie, delicate and ethereal with beautiful long auburn hair and dreamy eyes. She embodied the ideal of angelic beauty and was reminiscent of the women of Dolce Stil Novo. She was Ophelia Beatrice, the Ancilla Domini that we can see immortalized in the Three of Swords. She was born into a poor family, met Rossetti, fell in love, and married him. Thanks to him, she received an education, became a poet, and in turn, a painter as well. And um, the critics claimed that she was even better than her mentor, even better than Rossetti. But life with the artist, it was not easy. He was unfaithful, she had a miscarriage and fell into depression. She died prematurely at the age of 32, alone in a room through an overdose of laudanum. Conversely, the one perfectly embodied the ideal, provocative yet tortured tentress was Jane Burden long black hair and she became Jane Morris. 
Long black hair, blue eyes, and a perpetually pouting expression. She was Persephone, the beautiful... I'm trying to see. Syrian Astarte and the Queen of Wands in this deck. Jane also originated from a humble household. She was noticed by Rossetti and entered the Pre-Raphaelite entourage, became their model. She married William Morris, but had affairs with a number of other men, including Rossetti. Thanks to the company she kept and her lively intelligence, she developed a passion for culture. She learned French, Italian, and became very good at playing the piano. Fanny Cornforth, on the other hand, with her gold-colored hair, full lips, and sinuous curves, represented the epitome of the Junoesque beauty. She was Rossetti's maid and became his mistress. But unlike the others, she never became an intellectual and is mocked by the Brotherhood. Her features are like those of Lady Lilith, Lucretia Borgia, Venus Verticordia, which inspired our Ace of Swords. We should also mention Effie Gray. Effie Gray, the wife of the art critic Ruskin, who I mentioned, who annulled her marriage with him in order to marry Malay. Annie Miller, Hunt's beautiful lover from a poor background. Frances Polidori, Rossetti's educated and well-to-do mother. In addition to posing for her son Dante, she also modeled for their family friend, Lewis Carroll. So yes, I, the, the women were just as, or even more fascinating than the artists themselves. So that concludes my unboxing and walkthrough of the Pre-Raphaelite Tarot by Juliano Costa, um, based on art by the Pre-Raphaelite artists, Rossetti, Malay, Waterhouse, um, all of them. <laughs> so let me know what you think. Do you have this deck? Are you attracted to pre-Raphaelite art? Uh, do you have Juliano Costa's other deck, the Mystic Tarot, and how does that compare with this one? Are seeing this walkthrough, have I put this on your wish list? Are you more inclined to maybe research this Brotherhood of Artists? Let me know in the comments. Um, if this is your first time on my channel, if you found any value to this video, please consider hitting a like, a subscribe, all of which really help this small channel grow. So with that, I will leave you. Thank you for spending time with me and I'll be back really soon with another video. Bye for now.